the Lord and welcome to our session this morning here at the Hampton Inn, 4217 Kemp Boulevard. I'm Pastor Curtis Hutchinson. Uh, we're here with our with a prayer and a and an endeavor of to believe God for a cross preaching church here in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas, where it's uh, it, we I say it's a big city based on where we come from. Uh, a little town, 1,400 people. This is 104,000 people. But uh, Andrew did a great job last night ministering the Word, and this is really our second visit here. And uh, we're excited about what God's doing. Uh, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to this morning, a couple of teaching sessions. We'll have one about 45 minutes and take about a 15 minute break and then we'll go to lunch and, and, uh, and you know, we'll have a word of prayer and believe God for each other, with each other and mainly for this city that needs a church with a determined people, determined to know nothing other than Christ and Him crucified. Uh, and as we've been teaching, as the Lord's been showing us back home that uh, before Paul ever, or really what, what allowed the Apostle Paul to become determined to know nothing other than Christ and Him crucified was realizing that God was determined for His ministers not to preach anything but Christ and Him crucified. No matter if it's the baptism with the Holy Spirit the, or if you're trying to share from God's Word on how to have a successful marriage, every single thing, all Scripture is tied to Calvary or it just won't work. It'll be us trying to do something instead of believing in the only thing that allows God the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. So I would ask that you all and who are here and, and you all who watch this video would be in prayer for this city. Whether you have a church in your town or not, you know that every town needs a cross preaching, a true gospel ministry. And so you can join in prayer with us and believe God to raise a people up here. There are people here who already have their faith in the sacrifice, in the cross. They want a church. They're believing God for it. And uh, we've got a few people here this morning. We had a few people in November and, and, uh, and, and uh, hopefully next month we'll have more and more and more and God will even raise up a pastor and they get their own building and they have a ministry. That's, all, that's as simple as it gets. We're not looking at other big churches and how they function. Jesus Jesus just went and picked some fishermen and some tax collectors. He's, we, don't, we don't have to have a big Bible college degree. We don't have to have anything. That's what denominationalism makes you have. Jesus just says, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. I mean, all we need is to be full of the Holy Ghost and have the gospel and, and we can do what God's called us to do wherever we are. So we don't look at men and we don't have to have what they have. The, God measures the ministries based on the message, not the numbers. He can do more with five people who are walking in the truth than he can do with 5,000 people who are not. And that's just the way it is. That's the way he's always been. And he's not looking for big numbers. He's just looking for hearts that will believe him. And so uh, I'm, I'm thankful this morning to be here with a, with a few of those people who have like precious faith. And, you know, when we meet in our church at home at Crossway Church, we don't come in with all sorts of uh, different faiths and different beliefs. We come in uh, with like precious faith. We speak the same thing. We preach the Word of God in truth as it is in righteousness and our people grow. I'm not talking about a perfect church because where there's people there's imperfection. But I'm talking about a people who are learning how to make it through things they could never make it through before they knew the cross. Because the power of God comes to us to enable us to uh, make it through things that nobody else can make it through the way we make it through it. Everybody goes through in, the lost world goes through stuff, but it's how we go through and come out that makes us different. We, we don't come out bitter, we come out better. We don't, we don't go through it without the Lord and just in our own fleshed out ways thinking about revenge. We go through things trusting in what Christ did at Calvary, which is a, a humble spirit to receive His grace. And so we have so much to be thankful for. So much, uh, and I'm talking about Christians in general, but mainly Christians who the Lord has been able to bring back to their first love, back to the truth of God's Word, back to more than seeing God's Word and, and knowing what it says, but now knowing what it means, which we can only do through faith in the cross. 
the understanding of the scriptures God gives to those who have their faith in the cross, nobody else. That can be seen in Luke 24, 44 through 46 when Jesus opened the eyes of the two disciples that he found on the road to Emmaus. He, the, way he, the Bible tells us there the way he opened their eyes and their understanding of the scriptures was by telling them they referred to him and that he would come and die for the sins of the world. That's, that's what opens the scriptures up to anybody. Uh, the cross is what gives the written word the light. And before I dig into the lesson today, you know, I always like to lay these little foundations, and I guess the Lord does because I didn't have any intention on saying what I'm saying right now, but Jesus claimed to be the light, John 8, 12. In Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, a familiar scripture we're all aware of, Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And in Revelation 21, verse 23, the Bible declares the Lamb is the light. Well, is it the Lamb or is it Jesus or is it the Word? Well, it's all three. It's the Word of God in the light of Jesus as the Lamb. Outside of that, there is no understanding of the Word. You can go all over Walmart with your pork and beans in your buggy and pretend to be shopping just to try to give somebody a word from God and them people are out there a dime a dozen. But if their faith is not in the cross, hear me this morning, they don't have a word for you. If their faith is not in the cross, they don't have a word for you. Because the only word that can be given from God to you is through somebody He's able to work in and through. And Psalms 33, 4 is a paramount scripture that you never forget that tells us the word of the Lord is right and all His works are done in truth. Now that's huge. And I think I probably shared that the last time I was here and you'll hear me share that throughout till I die. Because if God only works in truth and Jesus is the truth, He declared Himself to be the truth and He also taught us that the truth when you know it will make you free. So what is it about Jesus and knowing Jesus that makes you free? Your faith in the cross. Without the cross, Jesus not my nothing. He's not my life. He's not my way. He's not my truth. Without the cross, the cross is what makes Jesus the lamb to me that, that brings all the presence of God, the provision of God, and the power of God into my life. Without my faith being in the cross, I'm just religious as the next person. I may be saved and I may get uh, goosebumps and feelings and I may get have all this feeling good and emotions and feelings and there's nothing wrong with emotions and feelings, but you can have those without being in the faith. Amen. I speak from experience. And, and so uh, the Word of God, for it to have any effect on us, for it to be truth that liberates us, it must be through our faith in the cross. Amen, Brother Curtis. And I'm going to show you that this morning a little bit deeper because here, here's what the Lord does for His people. He uses people like Brother Swagger and any minister who is focused on the cross. And Brother Swaggart in the ministry there 22 some years ago began to preach this message. And when people hear it, what it is really happening, he's, that ministry, God through that ministry is pointing His people to the river. To the river. Get back in the river. We got out of the river when we took our faith out of the cross and we got sucked into the purpose driven, the government of 12. And I don't just say those things because I've heard them. We were in all of them. We were in the government of 12. We were in the words you speak. We were in the, the uh, what, what did I say, the purpose driven. We were in all of that. If the word of faith, if it came through town, we jumped on the wagon. We were in all of that. We lost our home, our land, our vehicles because all of that. And through that, God was able to get us back to the pure truth, which is Christ and Him crucified. So when I began to listen to Brother Swaggart and the people in Baton Rouge, it was God pointing me back to the river. The river is not the, whoo, get in the river. No, the river is the revelation of the cross because we get it up 
growing in this. Then we, we get a little deeper. We're learning, we're learning. We got it up to the knees. Now it's up to the waist. And one day we find ourselves just swimming in the river. And it's the revelation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He is our Genesis. He's our revelation. He's everything in between. Praise God. And so, if you will, this morning, to begin with, I want us to, uh, to turn to Proverbs chapter 8. Don't know if I brought this out, but this is a great uh, uh, springboard, a great base scripture for those who are believing the message of the cross. Uh, and what we, what we mean by believing the message of the cross, we're about to explain that this morning in some degree. It can be explained in many ways, but we're about to see one of those a avenues this morning. And this is what we're going to show in the Scriptures. I'm, I'm going to say it, and then we're going to let the Lord show us in the Scriptures. It's Proverbs 8, and it's where we'll be. And, uh, but this is what we're going to say this morning. Your faith cannot be in the Word of God unless it's in the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. I heard my friend, Brother Lauren Larson, say that twice last uh, Wednesday morning, right before that, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, right before they went off the air, he made that comment, he made it twice. I've been preaching this for quite some time, that your faith, if it's not in the cross, it cannot be in the Word. You can think it is, but it's not. You can say you believe what's written there, but if your faith is not in the cross, it can't really be in the Word. And they didn't discuss this. They didn't go into... The, all he did was make the comment. And it just bear witness with what we've been teaching and what the Lord's been showing us. And I want to share that, what the Lord has shared with us, with you today. So here in chapter 8 of Proverbs, we will see in verse 6, is where we'll start, just three verses here maybe four. And the Bible says, Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And excellent things means things that excel, move you forward. You're excelling. You're, you're not just uh, complacent. You're not just still. You're not just idle. You are being excelled. You're moving forward. And the Lord says, I will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips. That means what I say shall be right things. God's Word is right. Remember Psalms 33, 4. For the Word of the Lord is right, and all His works are done in truth. And so verse 7 says, For my mouth shall speak what? What does He say His mouth will speak? Truth. truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Now watch this verse 8. This is very important. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Every word that God has ever spoken is located. They are words of truth. God's word is truth. But they are in righteousness. That means everybody can't just look at it and know what it is because God's word is in righteousness. Think about this. God says, all the words of my mouth. That means your entire Bible. Is your Bible, is all of your Bible the word of God? It is. Then that means every word in this Bible is God's Word and all of God's words are in righteousness. Yes. Amen. We're in agreement on that this morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. And, uh, and feel free to ask a question if you need to. Nobody will be able to hear it, so I'll have to ask it again for you after you ask it. But I want us to see this this morning. This is very important for those who are coming on board into the message of the cross because it's more than just saying, yeah, well, we believe the cross and, and leaving people because that leaves people dumbfounded. I don't know what that means. They believe the cross. Well, I believe the cross. You know, and a woman told me a couple weeks ago on social media, she said, I don't know all this stuff about the cross. It's... It's a message that's been around for 2,000 years. And, it, you know, and then, she threw some, she, then she threw some label on That's just that swaggered stuff that's trying to make everybody think that they're not right unless they're with Him. And, and, you know, and people, they don't know what we're talking about. I didn't when I first started hearing it. You didn't when you first started hearing it. You're like, you were probably like me. I turned the radio off. I, I said... Why are they preaching that? Hadn't he been in the ministry 50 years? Why is he preaching the cross, man? I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm laying hands on, on sick people. I'm, I'm into the, here we go, the deeper things of God. It's what we called it. 
And, and, and listen, there's nothing deeper in God's Word than the revelation of His love for you. And that's what the cross reveals. That's what the cross reveals. 1 John 4, 9 and 10 tells us, In this was the love of God. In that He gave His Son. And He tells us, that in, Herein is the love of God. Not that you loved God, but that He loved you and gave His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. That's the love of God. And that's powerful. So we have to, we have to and, and this is so important, and, and this is why there needs to be a church in every town preaching the Scriptures in their righteous context. Because if, if there's not, then you've got just a, a wandering church that's just in religion, and a lot of them want to serve God, but they can't serve God. You can't serve God except through faith in the cross. It can't happen. We're only serving ourselves. We're only trying to look good. And, and, and people, they'll get mad when they hear this. But they, what we have to do is, in these churches, people need to go home with something other than a feeling. If all you leave with is a testimony of that you, oh, there was nothing, no feeling like that. You didn't get what you needed. You have to leave the meeting with something that equipped you. The Word. You have to have the people that want to fall in the floor and shiver and quiver all over. You just go right ahead. But when you get up, I'm going to ask you what God tell you. Because God didn't send a quiver and a shiver. The Bible says He sent His Word to heal them and to deliver them. So what did God tell you? He don't show up to give you a quiver and a shiver. He shows up to change you, to equip you, to make you more like Him, to use you, to, to glorify the, the name of His Son. Amen? Amen, amen? All that stuff's a bunch of, I don't care who comes along and says, well, God might know. God sends His Word because everything we function by is faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, Romans 10, 17. And if we're not hearing God's Word in its righteous context, yes. we're not hearing. That's right. Faith That's can't right. come. Only flesh can come. And we'll leave pumped up thinking we've had a move of God. And all we've had is a big stirring of flesh. Because if we're not hearing God's Word in its righteous context... All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. When I hear God's Word in its righteous context, faith can come. And when faith comes, faith overcomes. Faith guides with strength. So that's what I wanted to show you first of all before we move on this one. You've got to settle that in your heart. And now would be a good time to do it. Because Romans 1.18 brings a great warning against all those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. You know what the warning is? If you do it, God is going to oppose all the ungodliness and unrighteousness that's there. And that's all that can be there. Mm -hmm. I don't care if we're swinging from the chandeliers and, and, and singing amazing grace, hallelujah. If we're holding God's truth in a place of unrighteousness, He's opposing all that is the outcome of that. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. I'm a Bible believer. Yes, amen. Everything I share with you this morning will be scripturally. I won't give you my thoughts and my opinions. I don't have any. They're, they're, they'll kill you. Mm -hmm. But we've got the Word that will give you life. Yes, if you'll believe it in the avenue of the One who is our life, yes. Jesus. So first of all this morning, we see here that every word God has ever spoken is found in righteousness. We settled on that. Okay, now let's turn in our Bibles, if we will, to Romans chapter 1. Now what we're doing right now is we're explaining in the Scriptures, allowing the Holy Spirit to show us what we mean by having faith in the cross or you cannot have faith in the Word. Okay, so in Romans chapter 1 verse 16... Paul the Apostle, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, because therein... Everybody say, therein. therein. 
therein, wherein? In the gospel. In the gospel, in the cross, that's exactly right. Is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What did we just see this morning so far in these two scriptures? God, every word He's spoken is in righteousness. And His righteousness is only revealed in the gospel. So every single word in your Bible must be looked at, not because you're saved by the gospel, but it must be looked at through the blood. Every word must be seen through the blood. Every word. Jesus said the scriptures are about Him. John 5, 39. He says this. He says, search the scriptures, for in them you say you have life. But they testify of me. But you won't come to me. See, he tells us there, only through Him. And when we say through Him, we mean His sacrifice. Only through Him as the Lamb of God can the light of the Scriptures come on and our faith be legitimate. Amen. Amen. This is what every town needs to hear. It will remove people who are humble and, and, and listen, people who are just humble and believe what is written will find themselves in a move of God. The, I believe with all my heart the people that followed Jesus were the people that, that went around and they were saying, Oh, this one we found. He teaches with such authority. But do you know what Jesus was saying? It is written. You've got to cling to the Scriptures above what Mama says, above what your best friend says. Listen to me carefully. Above even that which you feel. The Scriptures reveal Jesus. And only as we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus can we find out who we are in Him because we're in Christ. The Bible, people told me growing up as a boy, Curtis, if you just read that Bible, you'd find yourself in it. You'd find everything you need. You'd find the the direction of the Lord, and I'd pick it up, and I'd start reading it. I'm talking about as a Christian young man. And I I just just couldn't understand it. You know what? I, I just can't find me on this page. Lord, I can't find me on this page. Because nobody was telling me the Holy Spirit's not coming to reveal you. He's coming to reveal Jesus. But as He is allowed to reveal Jesus, I'll see me and who I am because I'm in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, so far, and this is very important what you're hearing this morning. It's very, it's vital that you know these things. Because if you don't know what has just been, not because I'm telling you, but because it's written. If we don't understand, and the message of the cross is what brings us to this narrowness. It's not a, it's not, people have called us, well, you're just excluding people. You're, 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 you, you've got something elitist going on, like you're elite above it. No, I'm, I just tell people what the Bible says. That's, right. That's, right. That's all I do. And, and there's lots of preachers who won't step into the place where they literally become de- determined to know nothing else. Yeah. I choose, and you have to choose. It's up to you. God's not going to slam you up in the wall and say, from this day forward, you'll be determined. No, God's going to let us go through some things, many toils and many snares, and many failures, just like the Apostle Paul did, to finally get to the place where he says, you know what, after all I've been through, I've learned one thing. I I am determined not to know anything outside Christ and Him crucified. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm going to preach the gospel and that's all I'm going to preach. I may give a little instruction about marriage and church order as He did, but but God could only use Paul in that avenue because his faith was right. Amen. Amen. So this is important this morning that we've seen every word God has ever spoken, the whole Bible, is only found in righteousness. And righteousness... Is, is only found, it's only revealed in the gospel. You saw it in your Bibles. Now one more scripture in Galatians, just to verify, confirm what we're saying this morning. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. This is just the third point in confirming because the Lord wants us all to know this today. He wants you to leave with this and He wants you to believe it to the point that you can share this. 
people will look at you like you're crazy. Galatians 2.21, Paul says, and he's talking to a bunch of folks who are being attacked by Judaizers to try to go back under law to move their faith to circumcision in the law of Moses. Today it's not that for us. Today it's the purpose driven, the word of faith, and, 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 and the promise keepers, and the government of twelve, and the twenty-one day fast. And, and Listen, it could be something as dumb as you thinking if you walk around the house three times, God will deliver you from that. If you'll just, if you'll just set a tomato on the table and concentrate on that tomato that God will take the power of smoking away from you. That's law. Why? Because that's something you're doing. Our trust in anything other than what Jesus did at Calvary puts us under law. We remove ourselves from Him, Galatians 1.6, and we fall from grace where Christ can no longer profit us, Galatians 5.1-4. You don't hear that taught in church. You don't hear preachers saying that you can remove yourself from the Lord. And it's written in your Bible. You don't hear preachers standing up before you and say, if you go back under law, Christ can't profit you. Christ can't affect you. That's in your Bible. I have a Galatians teaching that I'm doing now, right now, and it's, it's just over a year long. It's live every Friday morning on my Pastor Curtis Facebook page, and it's all archived up to the YouTube channel, Curtis Hutchinson 316. Go there. Start back in chapter 1, verse 1 with these little sessions. I promise you, you'll hear things that you need to hear that will equip you for the work of the ministry God's called you to. Every one of us have a ministry. It may not be as Andrew said last night to stand in a pulpit. Listen, but you have a ministry where you work. You have a ministry where you, wherever you are because you are a minister of reconciliation. He made you that when He saved you. Amen. Y'all make me get excited this morning. Praise God. Watch this now. Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. Paul says to these people who are being attacked, their faith is being attacked. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Now, we have to stop right there and, and, and when we're teaching these things and, and bring a little American uh, understanding into this. Frustrate to us means, David, you're frustrating me, man. You know, we're frustrating each other. and You know, that's not what the word frustrate means here. You look it up when you get home. That's what I tell our people all the time. Please go home and look it up. Don't trust what I say. Be a Berean. Go home and look this word up. This word frustrate means to set aside or to deny. Amen. Yeah. Now think, think about that. Paul is saying, I'm not going to set aside the grace of God because of what these Judaizers are saying. I'm not going to deny the grace of God because if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ died in vain. What's Paul saying here? That righteousness only comes by grace, but grace only comes by faith in the death of Jesus. That's what that one verse is saying. Righteousness only comes by grace... And grace only comes through the death of Jesus. Here we are back to what we said before. Righteousness only comes and is revealed in the gospel is the message of the cross. And every word that God has spoken must be seen through the gospel. That's why when we're talking about marriage to people or in counseling we say, Sir... The Bible says that you are to love your wife as Christ loved the church and here it comes, the cross gave Himself for it. Yes. The message of the cross is in everything. Yes. Train your children up in the way they should go and they won't depart from it. There's no telling how many times mamas have come to me through the years and said, Curtis, I, the Bible says if I trained my kids up in the way, they wouldn't depart from it. You, you just wouldn't believe what my kids are doing. They've left. They, they're out there. Some of them are locked up in prison. They, they've forsaken. And I had them in church every single we weekend of their lives. And I have to say, I'm sorry, church is not the way. Jesus is the way. And His way is the way of the cross. The cross is involved in everything. And it's a daily thing. Deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow me. And Jesus said, you, watch this now. Jesus said, I believe it's Luke 14, maybe verse 27, uh, that you can't be my disciple unless you take up your cross and follow me. So what are we hearing by that this morning? You can't learn without faith in the cross. Amen. 
You can read and study and guess what you can do? You can have a head full of knowledge of the scriptures and go around quoting the scriptures like you're Mr. or Mrs. Uh, uh, Wichita Falls uh, spiritual guru, but unless your faith is in the cross, you really don't have the knowledge you need. Because the Word of God outside the light of Jesus and what He did at Calvary, let me tell you something, the Bible's a two-edged sword. It'll cut you in half and kill you. That's right, that's right. Or it will conform you into the image of Christ. Amen. 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 So, uh, now, now we've got that. Now, are we good with that? Yes, now, you need to tell me when it is 1045, okay? Because <laughs> if you don't, I, it'll be 1145 and I'll still be rolling because I, I just like to tell it like He is. I like to show Jesus and what He did at Calvary in the Scriptures. There's no end to this. The only end of this for us is when we pass out and fall out and can't go no more. But I guarantee you, when you get up, there will be lots more to go. There's no end. He, he, Jesus is our eternal life. His Word is eternal. Our faith is eternal. I heard a preacher say this, and I love it. We're not perfect, but our faith is. Lord, my faith ain't perfect. I, you know, I, oh Lord, I, my faith ain't... Listen, as long as your faith is right... It's a perfect faith. And, here, and here's the scripture to prove it. Right where you are, there in Galatians chapter 2, back up one verse and look at this. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, right now as a child of God, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's hard for a cross-preaching preacher not to bring that scripture into his message because the faith we live by, hear me this morning, is the faith of Jesus. Amen. Don't sit here and try to tell me his faith ain't perfect. Amen. You understand what I'm saying this morning? From the scriptures, the Bible says if we're living by biblical faith, it is the faith of Jesus Christ. And his faith is a perfect faith. I'm not perfect. And sometimes I leave the faith for a, a lust of the flesh, or a, a, I'm just getting the flesh here and the, throw me a temper tantrum, and, and but I, and I leave the faith. But listen, when I come back to the faith, I'm coming back to a perfect faith. Hallelujah! It's a perfect faith that allows the Holy Spirit to do a perfect work. I'm not perfect. There's there's really only two things perfect on the planet. That's Jesus. And whatever he's doing, whatever he's doing is a perfect work. That, that should entice you and me to want to be in a place where we're allowing him to work in our lives because if he is, it's a perfect work. There's no flaws in it. That's good news. And he wants to work in us. He wants to change us. He wants to use every single one of us. And, and it's really amazing when you think how many people are in this room like eight people this morning God can take a group of eight people who said I'm willing just to believe and pray and come to meetings and one day you could very well be sitting in a sanctuary with 150 people in it saying thank God thank you for letting me hear from you thank you for, for giving me this faith to be able just to believe you I remember when we were in that Hampton Inn with eight people on that cold Saturday morning and look at this God and that will make you cry your eyes out. I can walk into our little old tin building where there's 140 chairs and some people drive by and say, oh, look at that. That ain't no church. And I can walk in there and tear up because I remember when we didn't have a person, a penny, or a place. I remember when we didn't have nothing but the gospel and the gospel has bought every camera. The gospel has bought every piece of carpet. The gospel has brought every person. And if the gospel didn't bring them and couldn't keep them, then whatever did bring them, sent them right back out the door. I'm telling you, it'll humble you to wake up one day and see something huge happening in Wichita Falls, Texas and knowing that you were on the ground floor that God was able to stir your heart, get you to a meeting, cause your heart to begin to pray for a city and use your intercession, your faith in Christ to see a move of God this city has never known. I'm not talking about some big church with lots of people in it. That don't mean a move of God. A move of God is a move of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. And in the scriptures this morning, God the Holy Ghost only works in truth. Yes, Lord, 
Psalms 33, 4 goes right along with Romans 8, 2 for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the Spirit of life. The Holy Spirit has a law He works by and it's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're not teaching something different. We're just, the Lord has given us more scriptures as He continually does whoever's in this faith to confirm this faith. Let me tell you this morning. If you're a Christian and you are outside of the faith, your faith is no longer in the cross. Hear me this morning. All God can do for you, according to the book of Galatians, is show up by somebody on social media, a knock on your door, a grandma, somebody, maybe an old gray-headed preacher on a SBN channel on TV and point you back to where you need to be. And if, you, he, and if he is able to bring you into the faith, back on the path of righteousness, then all, all he's going to do in your life is confirm that daily in the scriptures that you're on the right path. You're on the right path. Because Proverbs 4.18 says the path of the just shines more until that perfect day. The path we're on gets brighter. What makes it brighter? The scriptures. He confirms daily because you know how the devil is. He'll show up and tell you, well, what makes you think you're right? I mean, our kids who have grown up in this and not known anything but this are going to hear the voice of the enemy say, oh, what makes you think this is all there is? Maybe you think this is all there is because this is all you've ever heard. Maybe there's more things that you haven't heard. But when you get in this book right here, you're going to hear the Holy Spirit saying there ain't but one way. His name's Jesus and His way's the way of the cross. You're going to get your confirmation right here, not from your daddy, not from your neighbor, but from the Word of Almighty God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, because we've seen every word God speaks is in righteousness and we live by faith and faith has to come by hearing God and Jesus said the Scriptures that we're hearing are about Him. That means outside of Him, we're not hearing right. We're not hearing right when we're hearing some church talk about, well, if you'd start wearing this thing on your head or if you'd start wearing this or if you'd, or if you'd uh, do this at 10 o'clock every morning, you, you'll find, you know, I got in the mail one time, I got a, a package from somebody somewhere and it said, roll this rug out. And at 6 p.m. every night, get on your knees on the, the east side of your house. And it was from Christians. And I, man, I said, I got me something to start a fire with now. I'm burning this. I don't, man, Jesus in the Word said I can worship my God anywhere I am at any time. I don't need to go to a mountain or a prayer rug. Right now I can worship God. I can go get in my car and worship God. I can go behind the barn worship. Wherever I am I can worship God in spirit and in truth. He's not worshipped outside of spirit and in truth. Because the true worship of God brings God in tangible force to inhabit our praise and worship. But He can't do that if it's not truth. So all these big places you walk into and, and there's a feeling there. Listen, if they're not preaching the cross, all they got's a feeling and it ain't even real. You can take a shot of Jack Daniels and get a feeling. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. You can smoke something and get a feeling. Listen, and feelings are good. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost can give you some feelings. Yes, but if all you leave a meeting with is the way you feel, you, you did not get what God was offering. He comes to equip. I teach our people every time we meet. You need to leave this meeting with something. We are coming to worship, yes. We're coming to praise, yes. We're coming to fellowship and edify one another, yes. But we are coming to be equipped for the work of the ministry. That is my job as, as a gift to the body of Christ to equip them for the work of the ministry. That means when we leave this meeting today, you need to have something that the Lord has given you that will help your testimony, help your witness, help you minister the Word in its narrow avenue. It's narrow. Jesus, listen, there, Jesus was the most narrow-minded man that ever lived. That's right. So when people call you narrow-minded, notice this. They're just recognizing the Jesus in you. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. One day they'll answer to Him, but now they have to take it out on us because we're all, we are their only access to God. 
So they'll stone us. They'll put us in jail. They don't know they're putting Jesus in jail. They don't know they're still crucifying Jesus and stoning Jesus. But I'm telling you, you got something good waiting on you. You got a crown of glory coming. Amen. So I want to show you something now in the book of Luke. Two minutes. We'll, we'll read this scripture and say a couple things and I'm going the wrong way here. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 74. And we'll take a break at 1045. Andrew's going to let me know in a couple minutes. Luke chapter 1, verse 74. Andrew said, I'll share it. This in Luke. And I looked it up and I said, yes, there's 80. In Luke chapter 1, there's 80 verses. But in verses 74 and 75, it's what we'll look at before we take a break, then we'll come back and talk about it. That He would grant unto us, everybody say, that means me, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve Him without fear in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our life. Did you see that? Yes, you can, this is a promise to us that you can serve God without fear. Fear is what comes along to keep us from serving God. Fear will paralyze you. Fear will keep you out of the house of God. Fear will keep you out of the Word of God. Fear, it, fear what they think. Fear how I might feel. Fear might well, you know, uh, it's not really uh, the fear of flying. People say, "Oh no, I can't fly. I'm scared of flying." No, they're not scared of flying. They're scared of dying while they're flying. Death is really the, the, the object behind fear. And you and I, because of our faith in Christ and what He did at Calvary, the sting has been removed. From death. Yes. So we don't have no, we shouldn't have no fear except in God. Amen. 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 It's time? Andrew said it's time. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take about a, a 15 minute break, and I mean, we're going to start right back up at 11 o'clock sharp. So get you some water, go to the restrooms, and tune back in with us here in just a few minutes. Praise God. <laughs> 